Dive into God's Word. Dig a little deeper. Discover the Bible's message for you today. Pathway to Paradise Ministries presents Deeper, your daily Bible study with Dr. Tim Rumsey and Pastor David Salazar. Hello and thank you for joining us here on Deeper, your daily Bible study. I'm David Salazar and it's a privilege to come together with Tim Ramsey in this uh, today's lesson titled A Community of Servants. We are pretty much close in this last uh, quarter with this uh, week's lesson topic, which will be A Community of Servants. And it's it talks about a little more about what the actual church should be like, a community of servants. And today, as we start, we want to invite the presence of the Holy Spirit. So we all uh, we ask you to accompany us as we pray together. <clears throat> Heavenly Father, we thank you, Lord, for another day and another opportunity to come together and study your word. We want to be able to be uh, enlightened and to really understand how we can be better members of the church, better uh, com- people of the community, that we may be known that we love you and we love others as well. We pray for the wisdom and the guidance again of the Holy Spirit, and we ask all this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Tim, uh, I don't know if you have uh, if you've seen this where you live. Um, I, I know I've been there a couple of times, but I haven't really paid a lot of attention, to be honest, just talking with you. I'm not uh, having seen a lot. But where I live, uh, we have churches just about in every uh, I say intersection. Uh, you know, we live in a country setting and we see a lot of churches around here. Uh, there's a lot of, I think there's more churches than even communities. It seems uh, just about <laughs> around here. And, um, I mean, it's good that we have a lot of churches and that there's a lot of people that go to church and are Christians. I don't know if, if that's how it is over there in, in the, your part of the woods, but, um, I don't know. Is it the same or, or you've don't no, have there's, many quite, churches a, over there's there. quite a few here. There's quite a few here. We're kind of on the northern uh, edge of the Bible Belt here. Okay. Well, I am, I guess, right in the lower end, but still plenty of churches. But, you know, we the fact that we have and we see a lot of church buildings it does not mean that we actually have a lot of uh, congregations of community servants. And uh, we have to understand that. I, I think we have to come to understanding that God has a bigger purpose in establishing a church or, or in, in the establishment of his church. And the organization of his community of believers has a purpose to be able to live in a assembly pattern, in, in some sort of a community, holding all things in common and really working towards one goal that is to spread the gospel, to live the gospel and to serve and um, bless others as well. So today lesson, we're going to go into perhaps one of the most direct um, examples or, or, or teachings that the Apostle Paul had in regards to how a church should be and how we are to really connect with one another as, as a church family, as a community of servants. How can we really have that communion? And I think, I think he uses a very good language that will no doubt give us a, a very clear understanding. So how about we go into the book of 1 Corinthians chapter 12, and we'll start there at verse 12. And if you don't mind, Tim, opening it for us there. Let's start with that verse, verse 12. Sure. Good place to start. Paul says this, For as the body is one and hath many members, and all the members of that one body, being many, are one body, so also is Christ. Uh, he's using a, uh, a metaphor uh, that we're all familiar with, <laughs> a body here. And uh, so certainly something we can all identify with. Absolutely. I mean, everyone has a body. I mean, (laughs) you know, there is no question that we can all identify with this concept. And he chose the idea of the body, uh, not only because I believe everybody could relate to it, but it certainly gives us a concept of what or how the body works and how it can be successful at whatever it does, whether it's walking, whether it's eating, listening, hearing, eating, all those things. And so we're going to look into this uh, a little more closely and how he, by the inspiration of the Holy Spirit, applies this to the church. Because after all, he says that we are a body of believers in Christ. Uh, let's go into the first uh, you know, description. He's going to go into this idea of why it's so important to, to remember this. Let's go to verse 13 and read there. For 
by one spirit, we are, are we all baptized into one body, whether we be Jews or Gentiles, whether we be bond or free, and have been all made to drink into one spirit. Now, what are some of the situations here that you can see that uh, can prevent people from becoming one as we're supposed to? What do you think are, are some of the, the, the events in this verse that you, that you see can prevent people to really understand what it means to come together? Um, yeah, Paul brings up uh, probably the single biggest division that would have been an obstacle for these early Christians that, that came uh, out of Judaism or that were Jews, and that is how do they relate to their Gentile brothers and sisters that are also part of the church but you know, don't have this Jewish background, they're not part of the Jewish religion. Uh, this was a really big struggle for them as is revealed in, in a number of places in the New Testament. Uh, so he's obviously kind of focusing on that one. In other parts of uh, his writings, you know, he brings up other ways that we might be divided, uh, masters and servants, uh, male and female, uh, so forth. Uh, really, anything it seems can divide humanity. We're pretty good at finding reasons uh, to be divided <laughs> to to look at each other as you know uh, different. And uh, the challenge here, but also the promise of what God wants to do within the church, is that those differences. Uh, whether they're real or imagined or somewhere in between, uh, can become uh, either insignificant or they can become overcome uh, through Christ. Amen. And I think this is important that you mentioned. Perhaps the but what while it was there, you know, quite uh, real for them these social economic divisions because of race, of nationality, even economic status, free and you know, and 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 bond. This obviously would bring a big challenge, you know, and, and it happens even today in specifically among so many cultures that we have, so many languages that we are, um, you know, our, our, our backgrounds have and all these things. But uh, as you has mentioned, and Paul is mentioning here, as we come to the knowledge of Christ, as we are baptized into one baptism and one spirit, we are to sort of come together as as one Entity. Now, it doesn't mean that we're going to think alike or be used in the same way. And this is important. You know, it's not about becoming in, a, you know, all alike, everybody thinking the same way. It's about understanding that you are different, but as you come to Christ, you're under one jurisdiction, one uh, leadership, which is Christ. Now, verse 13, uh, it reads, or how about you read that for us, Tim? Verse 13 says, for by one spirit are we all baptized into one body, whether we be Jews or Gentiles, whether we be bond or free, and have been all made to drink into one spirit. And and then uh, verse 14, I forgot to ask you to do that. Going as on. Well. <laughs> no problem. Yes. We'll read 14 as well. For the body is not one member, but many. And, and this is the key right here, you know, we all come and then he says, look, the, the body is not one member, but many. And, you know, I think this is important to remember that the church had a purpose, but there are many different reasons why or different needs or different uh, areas where we can use and, and really can connect. And at the same time, we're all helping in one goal, in one uh, purpose. And, and this is important as we continue in this understanding of what it means to be a community of servants. Now, let's read verse 15, where it continues. It says, if the foot shall say, because I am not the hand, I am not of the body, it is therefore not the, of the body. So if, if let's say that what, what would happen if, if your foot, in this case, he's using an example, starts saying, you know what, I am not, because I am not the head, I am not the uh you know, or the hand or whatever, I'm not the other part necessarily, then I am don't belong to the body. I don't long, I don't belong to this one, com, you know, community. <laughs> but it, it's, it's obviously not the case. I mean, you know, the foot or the hand n cannot function without its connecting or connection to the body. So the same way as we come to this understanding of what it means to be one body under Christ, we have to really be willing to be used in the sphere, in the area that the Lord has given us talents for or aptitudes for. And all of them are exactly uh, important, are all needed. 
and, and should not be considered less or more. You know, my kids have just recently uh, started studying the human body, a little bit of basic anatomy in their school. And uh, just this last week, they were studying the different types of uh, cells within the body, the muscle cells, the nerve cells, so forth. And they really find it fascinating. And I think that most children uh, find this subject very interesting, their body, learning how it works, learning the different parts of it, the different systems, the different organs, and so forth. Um, it's a subject that, uh, again, I think for most uh, kids, at least, they're drawn to it. And mm -hmm. uh, I see there a powerful lesson that we should be just as interested. God designs that Christians should be. That's his intent. Uh, we should be just as interested in uh, not only understanding how the church works, but being part of that functioning as well. And, and by the way, uh, this is true in so many areas of life. What you're involved in, you will typically be quite interested in. So if you know church seems boring to you and you don't find much that uh, seems to interest you, look for ways to get involved. And as you become involved, as you become an active member in your church body, uh, I can guarantee you that your interest level will rise in what is happening and also in what other people are doing as well. Amen. And and it's in incredibly important, as you just mentioned, that when we study or we look into how I can be more effective, it's really about just like our body parts, all of them work in the benefit of, of someone else. You know, it, it, the body, you know, the fingers don't don't work for themselves. You know, they are... Uh, accustomed to be commanded by our brain and and everything that is controlled by the brain at the same time, it's in the benefit of something else or someone else. I mean, the heart pumps for the whole body. I mean, it's just a connecting, a, a, a continually uh, work of giving and sharing with a common interest, with a common goal. But what happens oftentimes, and we're going to go to this verse, uh, the next verse there in verse uh, 15 or 16, that we read here, what happens with us as well? Many times we're in the church and we start just acting in this way. It reads, and if the ear shall say, because I'm not the eye, I am not of the body. It is therefore not of the body. So sometimes we become unsatisfied with our position or our part in the work of, of, of this community of serv servants. You know, we might not like the, the, the position or where the Lord has placed us in and we're unsatisfied. And so therefore... You stop doing it. And now you mentioned about being, you know, enjoy what you're doing or, or, or be good at what you want to do. Uh, and you have, and that's right. But sometimes, you know, what you might want to do might not be possible. And that doesn't mean that you have to stop serving. There might be other ways, or maybe there's, you're not looking into really how you can be more effective. And I think this is a, a problem in a lot of times in, in our churches, our communities, that we are not looking into how we can be effective in whatever position I am, but we become dissatisfied with the, you know, what where where we are to be um, effective, and I don't know if that happens to you. Or have you seen this thing? But it's quite often that you see, sadly, uh, people forgetting their or not having not finding happiness in the position they have at church or whatever the Lord you know, has put, put them in and, place. And I've also seen that that usually God places us. You know, if we we pray about it, we ask, you know, Lord, I want to be involved. He will. He'll place us in a position where we can find satisfaction and enjoyment and uh, even learn to like that job if we didn't think we would have before. He obviously wants us to enjoy our work for him. And so he's uh, thoughtful toward us in that way as well. Amen. Uh, the last verse we want to read is verse 20 that says, But now are they many members, yet but one body. And this body, of course, is it's the one that is controlled by Christ, not by a man, not by a person. And we are to really surrender ourselves to the ruler and the rulership and the kinship of Christ as he is the head of the church. May God bless you. Uh, we look forward to studying here on Deeper tomorrow. Deeper is a production of Pathway to Paradise Ministries. For more Bible study resources, including books, DVDs, and study guides, visit pathwaytoparadise.org or call toll-free 855-HIS-TRUTH. To support this ministry with your tax-deductible contribution, visit pathwaytoparadise.org or call toll-free 855-HIS-TRUTH. That's 855-447-8788.